This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you another iteration of my ADS-1256 board. So previously I introduced three different kind of uh, boards. I have the first prototype which is based on obviously the ADS-1256 and an 80 mega 32U4 microcontroller. And then I kept this microcontroller, but I kept iterating the circuit with uh, more versions. So I made a new revision for this, which contains uh, small uh, changes in the wiring because I did a mistake in, in that version there. And uh, it got some little bit different layout, but basically uh, these two guys are identical. So there are not too many changes between these two. And then I made this more advanced uh, version, which uh, still uses the same uh, microcontroller, but uh, it got a lot of uh, new stuff. For example, a USB-C connector, and then I replaced uh, the switch as well, and uh, some other uh, layout changes uh, has been made. But now I have this uh, most uh, recent board, which you can see it's uh, much more smaller uh, than the other boards. And uh, the main change here is that I will use another type of microcontroller. So here I use a RP2040 uh, uh, microcontroller, so basically a Raspberry uh, Pi uh, type of uh, microcontroller. And then I kept uh, most of the things uh, unchanged in terms of uh, connectivity. So for example, here we have a USB-C uh, connector. And then I have the 3.3 volt uh, supply for the microcontroller. Uh, we will have a memory uh, for the microcontroller because it requires a flash memory. And then I have uh, some pins uh, broken out, which is the serial pins. And then uh, the programming pins are also available here. But mainly this board uh, sh should be used by uh, USB, of course. And then as you can see, uh, the board looks quite nice, especially the traces, because I made the traces uh, curved. Uh, hopefully they won't, uh, let's say, mess up the integrity of the signals, uh, we will see. But uh, so far the circuit and the components look fine. So in this video I'm going to uh, put together one of these boards and uh, test them, and then we will see how it goes. And uh, the main reason of this board is because uh, I want to start selling this board uh, as a proper uh, product and I wanted to miniaturize it because I found a very neat uh, enclosure, this guy here, and if everything goes well then this board should be able to uh, fit in this. And as you can see it fits in nicely. So then of course uh, there are end caps uh, to this thing, but I made this board uh, just with the exact uh, dimensions. So then this type of uh, connector will be used with it and it will stick out a little bit on this side where you see the connector uh, pins. And then on the other side I made the USB-C connector a bit offset from the edge of the board so it will stick out uh, as well but not uh, too bad. And then if everything uh, goes well, then uh, this thing will be sitting neatly in this box and then I can uh, sell it as a product. I will still have to do a few administrative steps with the tax agency, but once I do that, uh, I will open a web shop and I will sell this uh, product uh, on my website as well as the software for the PC. So then uh, you can have your own data acquisition system for the fraction of a price, for example, of a National Instruments uh, uh, DAC device. So then uh, we have this uh, nice board or these nice boards and I also uh, got a stencil and uh, this is obviously according to the new layout of the board. So then bought this nice uh, PCB and uh, the stencil were provided by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. So if you want to get uh, this uh, PCB and uh, want to get it from PCBWay, 
you can go to my project site and I share this PCB together with the bill of materials there. So if you want, PCB they can manufacture this board for you and you can assemble it yourself or they even have assembly services. And since I provided the bill of materials uh, for PCBWay, they can also assemble this board for you. So all you have to do, upload the code that I provided on my GitHub and uh, use the board as you want. So check out PCBWay's website via the link in the description and use their services to get this board. So coming back to the board, uh, now what I will do, I will uh, spread uh, solder material on this uh, board uh, using my stencil and then I will place the parts to their corresponding uh, places and then I will try to solder it using my own uh, reflow station and if everything goes well then we will see this in action. So here is the board, as you can see, uh, both sides. I put my GitHub account uh, for this project here. So you can get the Arduino library from this or from the official Arduino library manager. And my website is here and I will be able to write the date of assembly here. But yeah, uh, I put everything together. So now I'm going to show you how I test this board before connecting it to the uh, computer so this is uh, this serves uh, two purposes first I don't destroy my computer if something is uh, shorted here and uh, something is messed up with the USB I can potentially mess up my motherboard in my computer and I definitely don't want to do that but also if something is shorted I don't want to get all the current uh, through the component so I want to see it and uh, I want to test it so that's that and also before uh, going to the test I just want to show you how this looks like in the box so still now it's like nothing sticks out of course but for example we have this guy here so this is the 2 times uh, 8 pin uh, connector so that goes perfectly in this board and once again let me insert this here so you can see that it, it will protrude just minimally, but the fun fact is that if I put this here, then it will be almost flush uh, with, the, with the cover here. And then the same applies here, that this guy, the USB connector might stick out just a little bit, as you can see, but it will be covered by this. The only difficulty is uh, to machine this. So the idea is to take the size of these uh, panels, actually they are identical, and then I just simply 3D print something. But then of course I would uh, miss the purpose of this thing that uh, it uh, totally shields uh, the circuits inside. So I might uh, just take my time with a few drill bits and uh, files and make the holes uh, perfectly. And maybe in the future I will uh, machine them. So yeah, this is there. So I just remove these and this. And as you can see here, I have the jumpers, which is 3.3 .3 on the left side. And then the middle two jumpers are both ground. And then we have 5 watt. So 
I just take my power supply and uh, supply it for or supply it by 5 volts here and here and then I zoom in so if there is smoke you will see it but possibly there is no smoke and then I bring this here so we can read voltages so now the power supply which supplies 5 watt here is set to 5 watts and uh, 100 milliamps so that uh, should be fine so I turn on the power supply and I see 5 volts and uh, 28 milliamps so that seems to be okay and you can see a green LED there and a orange LED there so this is uh, telling us that we have 3 volt on this LDO side and then the ADS1256 own uh, voltage regulator has a feedback uh, LED there as well so let's measure these things I put a few test points on this circuit so if I go here is the ground and then this is the 3.3 .3 volt coming out from the LDO which belongs to the ADS1256 and that is 3.3 .3 volts so really nice up here we have the reference voltage uh, measurement and that is 2.495 that's also nice and uh, just to be sure we can poke somewhere where I suspect that we have 5 volts and that's our 5 volts coming from the regulated power supply so this is fine but uh, we have to make sure that the USB is also okay so let me turn this off let me turn the power supply off and then I remove these and I have this guy prepared hopefully you see the display and uh, here power comes in and then power goes out and in this thing here so if you remember I said that I had uh, 0.028 amps so 28 milliamps uh, so let's see what we have if I connect the USB and it's about the same so 5 volts and 28 uh, milliamps and we see the LEDs there so it seems like the USB works as well so now the next thing is to connect this to the computer so I'm here in front of the computer and uh, we are looking at the device manager and in the background I have the uh, library example for the uh, ADS1256 so now I'm going to con and uh, connect this thing to my computer and uh, we have a Raspberry Pi so yeah that's really nice uh, if this comes up that means that uh, we see the microcontroller and that's very uh, good news for us so uh, let me try to upload uh, this code to the uh, microcontroller which we, which we have in the background so let's first uh, check this line so you can see that I have many lines here because uh, I actually tested the code of the library for all these microcontrollers and they work and they work with these pins and now according to my board I have the data already on the 29 uh, GPIO pin uh, of the Raspberry and then pin 31 is the reset 32 is the sync and uh, 30 is the chip select and then when I measured the reference voltage with the multimeter I measured this number so I just enter this here and then uh, now I have a bit of uh, trouble because I don't know what I should select here so I just selected the Raspberry uh, 2040 and uh, you can see the rest of the settings so yeah hopefully this uh, will work uh, well so all I do I just hit upload and see what happens so it seems like we detected the Raspberry and as you can see now it appeared under the COM6 port which is very nice so then I select COM6 so let's see uh, what happens if I try to open the serial monitor so we have the serial monitor and if I send a capital T then uh, we should see the uh, let's say reply but uh, that doesn't come back so we should see why that happens 
And now I'm trying to close this, but it seems to hang. So something is not okay with the serial connection, it seems. So I reset the board. So then this disappears and we still have COM6. So now the problem could be that uh, this board is not compatible with my design. So I just uh, start to, let's say, randomly select something else. And uh, I honestly have no idea what could it be, but uh, Raspberry Pi Pico should be fine, hopefully. So we have the same stuff here. And uh, now I just reset the board to put it in boot mode. And as you can see, this window popped up. So we are in boot mode now. And that means that the USB works kind of, but uh, let's upload this code again. And it seems that this was also successful because now we have a new device, a Pico on COM7. So let's select COM7. And let's open the serial monitor. And we still don't have any reply. So let's send something to the microcontroller. And uh, no response. Okay, uh, we go back to the basics and I show you this thing just to show you how to troubleshoot these things if you uh, happen to have these issues. So I just wrote a very, very ugly code here. I just opened a new uh, sketch. Uh, I have a, an integer variable here and then I just simply start the serial port. And then inside uh, the loop, which goes over and over, uh, I print the current value of the i. I increase its value by one and I wait half a second and I go over and over every half a second. So every half a second, uh, the value of the i is increased by one. So I have already uploaded this code uh, and then the settings are these, as you can uh, see here. And now I just uh, restart the, the microcontroller just to, to be sure. And then I start the serial monitor. And as you can see, it works. So I, I can communicate with this uh, thing because uh, we are getting the numbers every half a second. So that puts us back to the uh, code for my library because something is wrong there. So I have to check the code a little bit and then I will let you know what was the error. So I think I figured out what was wrong and uh, there were two things. Uh, first of all, uh, my previous pin definition here was wrong because I was using the numbers of the physical pins of the chip, which is obviously wrong because I should have used the GPIO pins and their numbers. So now I replaced uh, the physical pin numbers with the GPIO numbers and uh, now my code works. So that was uh, causing troubles. And then uh, there is one more very important thing, and that is here. Uh, now this is just a quick workaround. Of course, I can figure this out better, but when we go to the RP2040 boards, uh, I have to select uh, the WaveShare RP2040 board. And the reason behind that is that its default uh, SPI is in the first uh, few pins of the uh, chip. I don't remember exactly, but I put it on the display. And uh, yeah, that's the default. And that's how I made my PCB. If I, for example, select the generic uh, RP2040, then uh, it will use a different set of uh, SPI uh, pins. So it will not find uh, the ADS1256. So now I have these uh, settings. And uh, as I can show you here, uh, my microcontroller can be found under the COM6 port. So now I reset uh, the board and open it. And uh, what you can see here is that uh, I just quickly wrote a code which uh, simply uh, prints the default uh, pins for the SPI. And uh, these are the correct pins, what I need. But uh, what is more important here is that we have the numbers which I expect. 
because here, uh, as you can see, I set the PGA, and that should be zero, and I set the multiplexer, which should be 103, and I set the data rate, which should be 90. So that's fine. So let's do one uh, test, and uh, that will be the following. I want to change uh, the sampling speed, and uh, that can be done with this function, which you can see in the background. So if I say F0, then I set the D rate to 240, which is the highest speed. So now what we can do is we can go to uh, this speed test. And what this speed test will do is that it will sample 15,000 samples with the read single continuous function, and it will measure the elapsed time. So if I send this uh, capital B letter uh, to the uh, serial port, then first of all, since I set the sampling speed to the maximum speed, this should be performed within half a second. And then uh, the number of samples should be around yeah, 30,000. So let's see. Yeah. So that was fast. Uh, as you can see, this was the time. So this is less than 500,000 microseconds, so less than half a second, because we took a little bit more than 30,000 samples. Uh, but what is the most important thing is that we took uh, 30,000 samples. And this is repeatable, as you can see. And uh, depending on whatever, I don't know the reason, uh, we get 30,000 samples or a little bit more. And then uh, let me change the sampling frequency to 15,000. So now I send uh, another thing, another B letter, and this should run for one second. And there is the 15,000. I can set this to uh, this. I think this should be 3,750 or something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers but we will see soon. This was 2000, yes. Uh, if we look at the table, so here you see uh, D rate uh, 30,000 SPS, that is the zero, one, two, three, and four. So when I selected F4, then I set the D rate to 2000. So F3 uh, should be this, and let's see. It works. So as you can see, uh, it works. I won't try slower uh, data rates because they will take ages. Uh, but yeah, you can see that the, the most desired option works just fine. So then, yeah, I declare my board to be working and I declare my Arduino library to be compatible with my board as well. So now, yeah, the future is that uh, I will prepare a few boards, test them and start selling them in the very near future together with the fancy software and uh, everything. And uh, what's the purpose of this board is obviously to have a high resolution, eight channel or four channel, depending on which mode you want to use, single ended or differential uh, mode. Uh, so it's an eight or four channel data acquisition module, let's say, or DAC. So it's a tiny compact module. It works with uh, USB. It has a USB-C uh, connector and uh, it's a quite tiny, reliable module. So I will try to carve the front and the back panel of this uh, metal enclosure. And then uh, we will see how the wall uh, thing looks like. So let's get back to my workbench. So after solving the software issues, uh, let's solve the last issue, which is uh, putting the circuit in a nice enclosure. So you can see that I prepared a few things already. And uh, as I said, uh, I want the circuit to be in this nice uh, and simple extruded aluminum uh, enclosure. And uh, the only thing which is missing and uh, probably the toughest part is to have these uh, two things on the on the front and the back panel. And then the only thing which is left is to put uh, these uh, panels 
on the box. And uh, I already did the kind of homework. Uh, so what I did is simply uh, place this here and then I uh, drew the lines according to the width and uh, the height of this uh, connector. And then you can see that, uh, let's call it uh, lined uh, part, uh, that will be cut out. And then I did the same exercise on the other side with the USB connector. So then this uh, dashed or lined uh, part uh, or shaded part will be cut out. Uh, I'm not going to record it probably because uh, that would be just uh, me struggling with this part. But uh, the goal here is that, for example, for this, I will just uh, drill probably two uh, four millimeter uh, holes at the two edges, and then the rest I will just uh, file it or use a, uh, a saw to get rid of it. And then this will be a bit more difficult, but uh, the goal here will be to have uh, four holes at each corner, and uh, the radius of the hole will follow the, the corners. Uh, yeah, at each four corners, and then I will just go from corner to corner uh, with the saw, and then the rest uh, will be just cut out or filed away, and then we will see uh, how it fits. Uh, but uh, probably on the longer run, if I manage to have uh, more orders, I will figure out a better way to, to do this. So once I figure out uh, the cutting procedure for these two things, I will show you the final result. So I think I finished with the filing, so we have some results. Obviously it's not perfect, but I don't have the best uh, tools, so it is what it is. So this will go on this panel, as you can see. And then this is a bit more ugly. And this will be the USB side. So I have the screws here prepared. Uh, so let's just put the things together. And as you can see, or maybe this would help, uh, the holes are like more or less aligned and there is a very small gap. So I tried my best, but yeah. Uh, let's see how it looks when I screw everything together. So this is the result. This is the front panel. And then this is the back panel. Let's go a bit closer. You can see that uh, the USB still has a little space. But uh, if I grab a cable, and plug it in and you can see that this is just fine there's still space so I think uh, it's enough to have the USB connector sticking out this much and then uh, regarding the front panel I can attach these things so now this is very neat and if I shake it, it's only the screw terminals, which are like rattling, but not the PCB. So I sized the PCB more or less properly. So yeah, this is the final product. Uh, it's just a small box. So I think then uh, I revise everything one more time and uh, then this will become a product. So if you are interested in this product, you can always contact me via email or through other channels, feel free to contact me and then I can uh, give you a quote on, on this. But uh, soon as uh, I can figure out uh, the ways with the tax office and stuff, I will open a web shop as well. And then I will uh, try to keep uh, a few pieces in stock so I can dispatch them immediately. And then I will manufacture them or make them uh, via PCB way and uh, their assembly services. So if you are interested in my project, please visit my website, link is in the description. Or if you are interested in the PCB, then go to my PCBWay project website, also link is in the description. And then uh, you can find all the relevant parts. And if you want, you can support me via Patreon. It's a good investment uh, for those who want to see projects like this and want to have access to more files and more uh, stuff. 
So it's a kind of a good uh, way to support me to make uh, more things like this. So I hope you like my new project or old new project. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.